Somalia is no stranger to factional fighting and killing and on the east coast of Africa there. This past week was no exception. At least 75 people were killed in the capital of Mogadishu alone. This dire situation is due in large part to the fact that there has been no functional government for years. Militants with ties to the terrorist group known as Al-Shabaab faced off against government forces in several clashes. And Washington considers Al-Shabaab a terrorist organization and says it's an Al-Qaeda proxy group. They're attempting to force the Somali government into implementing a stricter form of Islamic law. A question coming out of all of this, could the U.S. military once again become involved in Somalia? Our Paula Newton talked about that with Somalia's president. It's important that we collectively confront this danger that is a threat not only to Somalia but to the region and the world. And we intend to bring relief and security to our people. My confidence remains high in our national forces to do their job. But American air support during a military offensive, you're not ruling that out? It's hard to talk about that sort of thing in advance. Okay, but you're not denying it. Look, we would welcome any effort that supports our goal from the United States or elsewhere. Let's talk more about what's going on in Somalia and what are the implications further down the line. Kenneth Minkhouse is a political science professor at Davidson College in North Carolina. He's worked as a consultant in Somalia for the United Nations. He's joining me now uh, from Charlotte. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Well, why is this a potentially even more dangerous situation? Well, what we've got in Somalia right now is an impending military offensive by this transitional federal government that currently only controls a small portion of the capital, Mogadishu. This offensive has been backed by uh, international uh, states, including the United States. Um, it's expected any time in the next few months, and when it occurs, there's going to be much more heavy fighting in, in and around Mogadishu. Well, there has been some U.S. military support there on various levels, but are you seeing that militarily it might eventually translate into more U.S. troops on the ground there, uh, more artillery, etc.? How do you see it? We've had conflicting uh, statements out of the U.S. government this past week that they've recently tried to clarify. Uh, and in that clarification, um, the State Department made clear that they do not want this and do not intend for this to be an Americanized war, that the, this is a Somali battle. Um, having said that, I think that if foreign al-Qaeda operatives are flushed out in a military operation, it would not be at all surprising if the U.S. either launched um, air attacks or had special forces briefly on the ground. But I would not expect uh, there to be any significant and certainly long-term uh, American military presence there. And what's the concern as you have a government there that is virtually powerless uh, is the concern that terrorist groups, whether it be al-Shabaab or others, might continue to make Somalia a home base and might continue to grow? Well, there's a number of concerns. Uh, the, the, in many ways, the worst case scenario has already transpired. Shabab has close links to al-Qaeda now. It's developed those over the past couple of years, and Shabab already controls most of southern Somalia and most of the capital, Mogadishu. So from that standpoint, if al-Qaeda wanted to get up to mischief in East Africa, it already has a platform. Uh, were Shabab to take all of Mogadishu, uh, that would be a political setback for the U.S. and its allies and, and a disaster in the region. What kind of leverage might any country have uh, to help out Somalia right now? Not a whole lot. Uh, the problem has been the transitional federal government has been very weak. It's in its sixth year of a five-year transitional process. It still is only able to remain in parts of Mogadishu that are protected by 4,000 African Union peacekeeping forces. Um, it really needs to demonstrate both the capacity and the will to A, expand the, the territory that it controls, and then, and then B, to consolidate its governance there. Uh, we just haven't seen a whole lot of that. Uh, the TFG, I think, is considered by most international players, and including the U.S. government, to be the best of bad options there. Um, we're trying to make it work, uh, mainly because the alternatives are so much worse. No, it's so sad. It's such a beautiful country and such beautiful people. Yes. Kenneth Minkhouse, thanks so much. Appreciate your time.